If you have worked for any form of data analytics or data engineering team, you have definitely dealt with the never ending supply of dashboards. I mean, they just seem to continuously pop up all day, every day. And many of them just end up in what I like to call the dashboard graveyard. This is caused by the fact that every time a new director or executive decides to have a question, some analyst down the line is asked to build a dashboard. And rather than looking in what dashboards already exist, most people are just kind of forced to kind of build a new dashboard. Thus, we have what can be coined dashboard sprawl. Dashboard sprawl is a major problem for a lot of companies. They're trying to manage hundreds, if not thousands of dashboards using multiple different systems from Tableau to Looker uh, to QuickSight and just everything else in between paying not just for the licenses for all of these different solutions, but also for the amount of data being processed and time that is just wasted trying to build each one of these dashboards. Add to this burning money pit, not only your analysts and engineers time, but also now additional confusion as people try to figure out which metric is the right metric. More dashboards means there's a higher chance that these metrics don't match. And what that ends up leading to is, well, we don't trust sales or operations dashboards, so we just built our own marketing. Or even worse, maybe people without context might look at a dashboard, assume it's correct and be looking at something that is completely inaccurate or hasn't been supported for the last year. Don't even get me started with vanity metrics, which basically mean nothing but people asked you to build them. Again, you've just basically got dashboards everywhere and your team is essentially shoveling them around, hoping one of them has the right information. And of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you start to dig deeper into this problem, you'll notice that dashboards are just that surface level. Underneath all this, you probably have other analytical assets that need to be managed, not just dashboards, but looker explorers and data models, as well as you know one-off reports and excels and all of these things that become very difficult for anyone to know which is what and which one do we trust and which teams are using what and honestly at this point your team is probably just going to build another dashboard because they're too tired of asking all these questions quick pause i just want to say thank you so much for workstream.io for sponsoring this video workstream.io helps you rein in your dashboard sprawl if you want to learn more about them and make a free account please check out the link below and with that let's get back to our normal video. Okay, that's enough whinging. Let's actually talk about fixing this problem. So there's a few places you can kind of fix this problem. Start by fixing the source. And there's a few things we should do here. And step one is maybe don't build dashboards as quickly as you currently are. Don't just build a dashboard for the sake of building a dashboard so you can show it off and get promoted. First, you should start by asking why. Why are you building this dashboard? Who is it for? Who is the user that's going to be looking at this dashboard? Which part of the business strategy does this dashboard align with? What is it going to be driving, right? If we're talking about being data-driven, this dashboard should drive some sort of decision and not just provide some numbers that people can point at when they go up and be like, ooh, good. And when they go down, be like, ooh, we'll ignore this. When will this dashboard be reviewed? I think this is crucial because oftentimes dashboards get put out there and never get looked at again. That's why in my mind, a lot of dashboards end up in the dashboard graveyard, often DOA, where no one actually had a plan with where or when you should be looking at this dashboard. So make sure you know who and when this dashboard will be looked at. Is it in that once a week executive meeting? Trust me, you know this kind of stuff is occurring when your dashboard breaks because you will get a ping from an executive saying like, hey, our dashboard isn't ready for our executive meeting once a week. And finally, can this dashboard not be a dashboard? Can it just be a report or just a single number that someone needs to know? Sometimes people ask for a dashboard because that's just their first response. Sometimes all they wanna know is a single metric. And if that's all they need, just give them that. Don't go crazy and build essentially a piece of software that then needs to be maintained, tested and supported forever until it no longer is necessary. Next, audit what you do have. Look, it's actually a great habit to occasionally go through what you have in your various systems, whether it be Tableau or so on, and see what is being used and what can be taken away. Actually, at Facebook, we would do fixathons, and part of fixathons for the data team were to remove dashboards or tables that no one was using because they just cause a lot of unnecessary maintenance. Thus, removing them actually can save a company a lot of money. 
just give some sort of reward that's actually worth getting for the best and top fixathon fixers. And trust me, people will go and see which dashboards they can fix, even when it's a dumb, silly reward. I know I did it a few times. If you don't wanna do that, you can just do a centralized audit where you ask questions like, what is the impact the dashboard is driving? And can you connect it to some sort of KPI or business result? And what's the overall dashboard's NPS? Can you even answer that question? Is this dashboard a duplicate and can it be consolidated? And more importantly, who is actually looking at this dashboard? What are they using it for? What are the commonly asked questions that they're coming to to get answers for? And do folks actually know how to use the dashboard itself? Once you start to answer these questions, you can kind of start to see where dashboards can be removed. Another very common approach to trying to manage your dashboards and just dashboard sprawl is build some sort of asset management system. Now, usually this looks like a portal and I've seen this across multiple companies. When I worked at Providence Healthcare, uh, when I worked at Facebook, someone always inevitably is like, I am going to create a portal where people can go and see our key dashboards, metrics, things of that nature. The reason being that even if you use Tableau, you probably use three or four other dashboarding tools. And yes, Tableau has some form of portal, but only for Tableau. And so regardless, you're always stuck kind of trying to centralize all of these assets. So things to consider as you're trying to develop your own portal system is who is the team that's going to be managing this? Generally speaking, it's going to take one or two people, basically a full-time role, just to manage this whole new portal you've developed. On top of that, you're going to need to do something in terms of managing certifications of what is actually valid or not valid. Are these dashboards certified by the team that's put them there? Or are they just kind of put there because people think that they will be valuable at some future state? In addition, you wanna track the actual usage of these various uh, assets that are being developed. So who's actually viewing them, how often? Also, what's their feedback? You know, can you add some sort of information or comments, you know, from these users? Can you add that into the portal? Because that's really great. So as future users of these dashboards and assets come to look at them, they can quickly understand what exactly is going on. But the truth is a lot of companies don't have the resources or time to develop their own systems. And that's why recently I was talking to Nick from Workstream.io, who's kind of developed a solution to try to solve the problem of dashboard sprawl. And Workstream has been kind enough to sponsor this video to cover, I think, a very important topic that all analytics teams struggle with and try to help provide a solution to solve it. Your team can reduce a lot of the manual effort required to build a portal, manage documentation, so on and so forth, when you're often trying to manage all these dashboards and assets by using workstream.io. But let's let Nick explain this himself because I had a great conversation with him not too long ago. Yeah, I mean, like I was at this point in my career where I could have kind of continued in this like analytics role. Uh, and a lot of the reason I didn't was because I felt all these acute pain points and they drove me crazy so much. So I decided to head in a slightly different direction. Just to quickly show you uh, Workstream. Again, think of this as a, a single repository for analytics assets across all the different tools that you use to, to consume data. This could be a dashboard in your BI tool like Looker, or even a one-off document with like exploratory analysis, data that lives within an operational system, uh, or even um, all of those things for across multiple tools in a, a larger environment. And so at first, we can help you consolidate all of that into a single drive uh, to access it. And as you start to categorize these things, we'll start to build out uh, various collections for you of certified assets. Uh, or assets maybe that are in development, um, or you can build one-off collections based off of uh, various users and use cases within the org. Um, and as more and more stuff gets added to the system, uh, we help with uh, finding things, finding assets across systems, and probably more importantly, uh, finding the content that's been curated uh, for the organization, again, around lots of like enablement use cases. So. Uh, hey, we've got this report in uh, Looker. How does the organization use it and understand the filters and how to think about it? And the way we can help solve that um, is by allowing you to build embedded documentation that lives right here. Or maybe you want to report a training video um, and you can embed that right here as well. I would say on the flip side, uh, you want to think about how you address the long tail of stuff that is cluttering up your environment and it's not being used. And there's two things I'll show you on that. So the first is we help surface up for you um, information about how these things are being used. Um, and so you can see, hey, within the last 30 days, 
what are the most viewed uh, assets in our environment? Or on the flip side, things that aren't being viewed at all. Uh, and again, if you wanted to click in more to understand that, you can actually then rewind and see like an entire history of interactions and who's using this thing, you know, items that are no longer in use or stale. Um, and so we, we try to think about both sides of the of the problem. And um, uh, and normally our adoption of our product only starts with the former. Hey, this is a clean space to curate information. Uh, but the long-term benefits often are around um, uh, cleaning things up as well. With all that, dashboard sprawl is a major problem that most companies face, especially as you start getting at the enterprise level. It is expensive. It's really easy to lose trust as people don't know which dashboard is which and they just end up building their own. And just for the fact that people like to build vanity metrics. And obviously there's a ton of ways you should approach this problem. First, by just making sure you're only building the right dashboards at the right time, auditing the current setup and assets you have to make sure Hey, if there's stuff you can get rid of, get rid of it because it just adds more maintenance in the future. And finally, finding a right solution on some sort of asset management portal. Whether that's workstream.io or you build your own, the point is you will likely need to solve this problem. If not today, someday in the future when you're managing a team of 100 data engineers and analysts, all of which want to build their own special dashboard. With that, guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.